The following stories are crimes committed on American citizens by illegal immigrants who have no respect for America's laws or her people. Troy Payton was stabbed to death with a butcher knife by an illegal alien. Amiel Azamita, during a confrontation after Azamita has insulted a 15-year-old girl, all of whom lived in a residence motel near Las Vegas. Even though the killer was a previously deported illegal alien, District Judge Joseph Bonaventure sentenced Azamita to only 19 to 48 months, even though the killer pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter. Azamita also had a prior arrest record for assault and domestic violence in Colorado and had been deported a month before the killing. Assemble the Goodbye. Goodbye. Be gone, Satan! Goodbye. Mr. Fly, that much. Well, hello! Hello, guys, looks out there in Internet land, and welcome to Cafeteria Catholics, where we say what most Catholics are thinking. Drop us a line, cafeteria Catholics, yahoo.com. And does anyone even check their email anymore? <laughs> when was the last time you checked your email? Am I wasting my time here by directing you to email me? I mean, nowadays it's all about Facebook, it's all about Twitter, it's all about all of these other internet media platforms. So am I wasting my time? Maybe I should cut that out of there, right? Something to think about. But anyway, I am your humble host, Efren Cortez, coming to you from the great city of Lexington, Kentucky, via Spreaker at iHeartRadio and Stitcher.com. Go to Stitcher.com, download the free Stitcher app, and be one of the millions listening to Cafeteria Catholics on your car dashboard. And you know, talking about Facebook, right? We've got this new Cafeteria Catholics Facebook page, as I told you about last time on the show. And I just posted on there exclusive audio on Facebook. That's right. It's the Cafeteria Catholics Facebook Minute, which actually turned into nine minutes, <laughs> right? It sounds good in theory, right? The Cafeteria Catholics Facebook Minute. But, you know, once I get to talking about these issues that I'm passionate about, the teaching of the Catholic Church, the unjust treatment of Christians by the Pope Bomb administration, once I start talking about that stuff, I just can't shut up, fellow Catholics. Which, it's ironic. It's ironic because I'm a reserved, quiet, laid-back kind of guy, right? I'm laid back. But, for some reason, I get behind the microphone and I just explode, fellow Catholics. I explode. And so, but I'm actually, in reality, I'm a nice, quiet, laid back kind of guy. And so, if you happen to see me around Lexington or around Kentucky or wherever, and you know that I'm the guy that does the Cafeteria Catholics podcast, your favorite podcast of all time, don't be afraid to say hi to me, okay? I'm not going to eat your leg or anything like that, okay? <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not a ravenous wacko, okay? I'm a laid-back, quiet kind of guy, okay? But don't be surprised if I don't say much, okay? Because I am a quiet kind of guy. But anyway, go to Facebook, Cafeteria Catholics, and there's a whole lot there, okay? We've got Long Lost Twins. We've got Name That Baby. We've got Who Does The Quote Belong To. We've got all kinds of stuff to try and make it fun for you, okay? So go to Facebook, Cafeteria Catholics on Facebook. Like the page. You know, all that stuff, okay? Or don't like the page. Y you can post whatever you want on there, too, okay? You know, uh, you know, within reason, okay? Don't go... 
don't go crazy on me, okay? Don't go crazy on me. But you can post whatever you want, okay? I honor your freedom of will. Unlike the Pope Bomb administration, I honor your freedom of will. And you know what, fellow Catholics? I am going to flip my lid. I'm going to lose my mind the next time that I hear a member of the clergy, a member of mainstream Catholic media, compare immigration law in this great country of ours to Roe versus Wade. We all know Roe versus Wade is an unjust law, right? It is an unjust law because it fails to protect the lives, the very lives of its citizens, right? The American citizen, the life of the American citizen is not protected under Roe versus Wade. It is annihilated under Roe versus Wade. And so Roe versus Wade is an unjust law. There's no way around that, right? But immigration law, unjust. The reason we have immigration law in this country, as does every other country throughout the world, right? Every other developed and developing country throughout the world has immigration law, right? And the reason we have these laws on the books in this great country of ours is precisely to protect the American citizen. And before we jump into all that, fellow Catholics, you see what happens when I get behind the microphone? I forget what I planned to do. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm passionate about these issues, and so I forget what I'm going to do, right? As soon as I get behind the microphone and I see the on-air light, it's like, go, let's go, right? But this is what I meant to do, okay? This is what I meant to do. You know, sometimes when we are bored, right? Or I shouldn't speak for you, right? But when I'm bored, you know what I do around the house when I'm bored? I look around, right? I look in the drawers. I check my jackets that I haven't worn in who knows how long to see if there's change in them, you know? <laughs> That's what I do when I'm bored, right? But anyway, I'm going through my drawers here at the house, and I come across this prayer. And as you know, at the end of the show, I always ask that you pray for this great country of ours. As you know, this great country of ours is in dire need of prayer, right? And so I'm looking through uh, the drawers here at the house, and I come across this prayer, okay? And it is a prayer for our country. This is the name of the prayer, actually. A prayer for our country. And it's a prayer. I'm sure you can find it on the internet, okay? And it's put out there by men of the Sacred Hearts, which, you know, it's usually Sacred Heart, right? The Sacred Heart of Jesus, right? But for some reason, these guys, they call themselves Men of the Sacred Hearts. And they have a prayer for our country. And I figured, I thought it, be, it would be fitting to go ahead and open the show with this prayer. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's ask for our Blessed Mother's intercession for this great country of ours that is in dire need of prayer. Okay, In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, O most blessed of Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, at this most critical time, we entrust the United States of America to your loving care. Most Holy Mother, we beg you to reclaim this land for the glory of your Son. Overwhelmed with the burden of the sins of our nation, we cry to you from the depths of our hearts and seek refuge in your motherly protection. Look down with mercy upon us and touch the hearts of our people. Open our minds to the great worth of human life and to the responsibilities that accompany human freedom. Free us from the falsehoods that lead to the evil of abortion and threaten the sanctity of family life. Grant our country the wisdom to proclaim that God's law is the foundation on, uh, uh, on which this nation was founded and that he alone is the true source of our cherished rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit 
of happiness. O merciful Mother, give us the courage to reject the culture of death and the strength to build a new culture of life. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. A powerful prayer. And as I said, I'm sure you can find this prayer on the internet somewhere. A prayer for our country by the men of the Sacred Hearts. Okay? So there it is. Great way to open the show. But I'm going to flip my lid the next time. The next time that I hear a member of the clergy say that immigration law in this country is an unjust law. How is it unjust when the intention of these laws is to protect the life, in some cases, of the American citizen? Roe versus Wade, uh, this is a whole other story, right? Uh, this, is, uh, this is on the other spectrum of the argument, right? It's not a just law when we have a law in place that allows for the killing of American citizens in the womb. You know, Mexico, let's say Mexico puts a law into place where, you know, mass on Sunday is no longer allowed. We are no longer allowed, or they are no longer allowed in Mexico to go to mass on Sunday, right? We here in America, we can look at that and say, that's an unjust law, right? But technically, we are not affected by that law because we are not citizens of Mexico. We are citizens of America. And so we can look, just as we look at China and we see what's going on, the persecution of Christians, and we see a state-run church in China, and we can look at that and we can say, that's unjust. These laws in China that allow for this type of action against the Chinese citizen, these laws, they are unjust. But they are not directly unjust toward the American citizen because we don't live in China. Not yet anyway, right? <laughs> and so uh, those laws do not affect us directly. Right? The laws of this great country of ours, they might be unjust, some of them. Roe versus Wade is unjust. But a Roe versus Wade does not affect people who live in Mexico, people who live in Ecuador, people who live in Venezuela, because they are not citizens of this country. Right? And so, how could immigration law be unjust? when those laws are not aimed at the citizen of Mexico or the citizen of Venezuela. They are aimed at the American citizen, at the protection of the American citizen. As you heard at the top of the show, not all illegal immigrants are here for the purpose of achieving the American dream. There are those who are here to commit crime. There are those who are here to traffic drugs. There are those who are here to traffic human beings. There are those who are here to uh, do the American citizen harm. And this is why we have immigration law on the books. Not to hinder people who live in Mexico. Not to hinder people who might live in Venezuela or Ecuador or somewhere in Central America or whatever other country we might happen to be uh, talking about, right? Uh, it has nothing to do with, with hindering a person who is not a citizen of this country, okay? And not everyone who is here in this country illegally is here to work. The following stories are crimes committed on American citizens by illegal immigrants who have no respect for America's laws or her people. Troy Payton was stabbed to death with a butcher knife by an illegal alien. Amiel Azamita, during a confrontation after Azamita has insulted a 15-year-old girl, all of whom lived in a residence motel near Las Vegas, 
Even though the killer was a previously deported illegal alien, District Judge Joseph Bonaventure sentenced Azamita to only 19 to 48 months, even though the killer pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter. Azamita also had a prior arrest record for assault and domestic violence in Colorado and had been deported a month before the killing. And so in what way is immigration law unjust? when immigration law in this country is there to protect the American citizen from illegal immigrants such as uh, this man there who killed someone, stabbed someone to death, stabbed an American citizen to death illegally here. You know what is unjust about immigration law in this country is the fact that it's not being enforced and unbelievably to me we've got members of the clergy in this great country of ours who see nothing wrong with a president who will not enforce immigration law in this country and you hear it all the time right uh, oh yes you know uh, our bishops the bishops the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops they are not for the violation of the law right this is not what they seek when they ask that something be done about immigration in this country they are not looking for the violation of the law but yet they back Barack Hussein Obama and his lawless actions as it pertains to immigration in this country here we have Bishop Eusebio Elizondo I think some of you guys you might remember him right if you've listened to the show for a while now I've played clips from Eusebio Elizondo Bishop Eusebio Elizondo and here he is once again patting Barack Hussein Obama on the back for breaking the law and refusing to enforce immigration law in this great country of ours law that is on the books in order to protect the American citizen I am very welcoming the, his, his move, his action, of course, because I will benefit at least five million people to, to really legalize their, their status here, and especially for all those uh, adults that have already children, U.S. citizens born here. And so it will be great for them to have, have a legal status and work here normally, and, and for them it's a, re a real relief. And so he backs the violation of the law, in spite of the fact that we are told time and time again by our bishops that they are not for the violation of the law. And yet, Bishop Eusebio Elizondo patting our president on the back for precisely for breaking the law in this great country of ours breaking the law, refusing to enforce law. This is the chief executive of the land, Barack Hussein Obama, our first Muslim president, right? Our first, <laughs> our first African president, Barack Hussein Obama, refuses to enforce the law. And yet, lives are being lost in this great country of ours because of this man's refusal to enforce just law in this great country of ours law that is there to protect the lives of american citizens in many cases officer michael gordon lost his life to a drunk driving illegal alien the chicago policeman was in the driver's seat of his squad car when it was struck by Luis Calia, a Guatemalan whose blood alcohol level was 0.177, twice the legal limit. Luis Calia died a few hours after striking the police car, and Michael Gordon is survived by his wife and four children. Before entering the police department, Gordon joined the 81st Airborne right after high school, serving in Bosnia and Korea. As a policeman, he asked to be assigned to a tough part of Chicago 
because he wanted to do more than just write tickets. So you see, they're not all here to work. They are not all here to work. And, you know, uh, I listened to that, and this police officer, he asked to be placed on a tough part of Chicago because he wanted to protect uh, 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 citizens of Chicago. And yet here we have, you know, in, in Chicago, you know, this is an inner city, which means that the population is predominantly going to be black, Hispanic, and so forth. And yet we hear all the time that cops are out there just willy-nilly gunning blacks down, right? Blacks are being gunned down by cops. And it doesn't make sense to me when they say that, right? Uh, 93% of crimes com uh, committed against black people are committed against black people by other black people. 93%. And so it doesn't make sense to me. Why would a guy, a police officer, right, why would this guy sitting at home minding his business decide he wants to be a cop in Chicago, one of the worst cities as far as crime is concerned, one of the worst cities in this country of ours, why would a guy volunteer to be a police officer in such a city, right, to gun people down? He doesn't have to do that. They're doing that on their own. All he has to do is stay home, sit back, watch it happen. Why risk your life as a police officer in one of these inner cities where blacks are being killed by other blacks so that you can, uh, you know, uh, have a legal right to a gun as a police officer and go out and shoot black people? Why do that when blacks are doing that on their own? They're doing it to each other. Why put your life at risk? So it doesn't make sense to me. This idea that these guys, they are becoming cops simply for the reason, you know, that they want to go out there and shoot black people. All right? Why would they want to do that? Why would they want to put their lives in danger when black people are gunning each other down anyway, right? So it doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense. But illegal immigration in this country, fellow Catholics, right? These laws, they are there. Immigration law is there to protect the American citizen. And yet we have bishops throughout this country who compare. They have the audacity to compare law that is on the books to protect the American citizen to Roe versus Wade, a law that is there to annihilate the American citizen. And Bishop Elizondo, he's not alone. Here we have Archbishop Supich. What do you think of President Obama's immigration proposal? Well, the bishops of the United States uh, were very much in favor of action being taken to protect people who need to come out of the shadows. It's been uh, too long uh, of a time for... Come out of the shadows. <laughs> this, is a, this is a phrase that it gets me every time I hear it, especially when it comes out of the mouth of a member of the clergy, the Catholic clergy. Come out of the shadows. You know, supposedly, we, we are told, these guys, you know, these illegal immigrants, they are hard workers. They're out there in the workforce. They're working. They are paying taxes. They contribute to American society. How can they contribute to Amer American society if they are hiding in the shadows? You can't have it both ways. Either they are hiding in the shadows or they are participating in every aspect of American life. Out of the shadows, right? right let's say for the sake of argument, let's say that they are hiding in the shadows. Why are they hiding in the shadows? Who hides in the shadows? You know who hides in the shadows? The murderer, the drug dealer, those who are trafficking human beings. They hide in the shadows because they don't want to be caught. Because they violated the law and they know that they violated the law. And so, if these 
people are truly hiding in the shadows, the reason they are doing so is because they have violated the law and they know it. Hiding in the shadows. Uh, really? They're hiding in the shadows, but yet they are contributing to American life, right? They are... Uh, uh, they contribute to American society by taking part in every aspect of American life. How are they hiding in the shadows? People to wait for comprehensive immigration reform. And so we see this as an important first step, hopefully to jumpstart what's happening. My concern would be that we would have uh, a... So this is just the first step. As far as uh, Archbishop Supic is concerned, this is just the first step. The violation of the law by Barack Hussein Obama, this is just the first step. And they're all behind them, right? They claim to be for a legal solution to the so-called immigration problem in this great country of ours, but yet they pat Barack Hussein Obama on the back for violating the Constitution of the United States, right? It's okay when, you know, uh, the president violates the Constitution of the United States when it, when it serves a purpose, when that violation of the law serves a purpose for which the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops is for. They are for illegal immigration into this country, right? They can say whatever they want, but they are for illegal immigration into this country, this is why they pat Barack Hussein Obama on the back. And so they are for the violation of the law, the violation of the Constitution, when it serves a purpose that they happen to be for. But they're not for it when it violates a right that they might hold dear such as a uh, religious freedom and hey we should all be against the violation of the Constitution our very First Amendment which enumerates religious freedom right we should all be against it but you can't have it both ways you can't be for the violation of the Constitution in one instance and be against the violation of the Constitution in another instance when you feel that you are being affected by that violation of the law by that violation of the Constitution you can't have it both ways okay this is a lawless president and our bishops they should not be in bed with this president for any reason whatsoever doesn't matter whether it's an issue that you happen to agree with with this president this president he is going to stab you in the back the, like one of these illegal immigrants right he's gonna stab you in the back the first chance he gets <laughs> okay just like he did with the HHS mandate shakes hands with Cardinal Dolan oh don't worry the conscience clause is gonna remain in place and as soon as Cardinal Dolan walks out of the office there, the Oval Office, Barack Hussein Obama stabs Cardinal Dolan in the back, right? Crumbles up the conscience clause in his fist, throws it in the trash. And so I wouldn't be cozying up to this president for any reason whatsoever, even if it's an issue that you happen to agree with, right? And make no mistake about it. See, the bishops, they come from a good place, right? They come from a good place. They're violating the law, right? But they come from a good place, right? Not that there's any good reason to violate the law, right? If it's a just law, which laws we have on the books, immigration laws we have on the books, they are just laws because they are meant to protect the American citizen, right? But they come from a good place, right? They come from a good place and they want the very best for humanity, right? Doesn't matter where, where you come from, right? Whether you are Mexican, whether you are 
you know, from Venezuela, Ecuador, wherever you happen, Chile, Panama, whatever, right? They want the best for humanity, for the human being, right? For the dignity of the human being, right? And this is where, where they, they are coming from. But this is not where Barack Hussein Obama is coming from. This is not where the Democrat Party is coming from. This is not where Republicans are coming from. Do not fool yourselves. All they see in these illegal immigrants is voters, right? This is what they see. This is how they see them. They see them as a new block of voters. They don't see them as a impoverished people who need help. They want to keep these people poor. This is what they want, right? They want to get them in here, into this great country of ours. And they want to uh, 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 give them you know, the, 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 the greatness that welfare can provide, right? The so-called greatness that this country has to offer as far as they are concerned is welfare, right? And quite honestly, I mean, I, I don't see uh, any other option when you've got 93 million Americans who have left the workforce in this great country of ours. There's not many jobs to go around any longer, not many jobs. And so the only viable option could be welfare, could be disability, right? But the Democrats, they don't care. They don't care. The Republicans, they don't care. All they see is a new block of voters. They don't see the dignity of the human person. This is not what they see. They see the dignity of the vote. That's what they see right but I'm gonna flip my lid the next time that I hear I'm gonna flip my lid when I hear another member of the clergy say you know that these people need to come out of the shadows <laughs> really they need to come out of the shadows <laughs> okay but I'm gonna flip my lid the next time that I hear a member of the clergy, a member of mainstream Catholic media say that immigration law in this great country of ours is unjust. I'm going to flip my lid the next time they compare immigration law in this great country of ours to Roe versus Wade. Really? Really? Roe versus Wade annihilates the human person in this great country of ours. The lack of enforcement of immigration law in this great country of ours annihilates, in some instances, American life. The lack of enforcement of immigration law. This is where I see immigration law being unjust when it is not enforced. But immigration law is a just uh, set of laws in this great country of ours. And so I say, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and obey immigration law. We are not, you know, uh, we are not obliged to obey unjust law such as Roe versus Wade. Immigration law in this great country of ours is not unjust. It is not unjust. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a break. We will see you on the other side. Please, fellow Catholics, do not touch that mouse. What's going on? You're a humble host here, Ephraim. Cortez. You know, you can now listen to my show, your all-time favorite podcast, Cafeteria Catholics, on Stitcher. Stitcher is radio on demand. Download the free app today. Listen anytime, anywhere. Stitcher is an award-winning free app that allows you to listen to all your favorite shows, plus discover new programming from among 20,000 news, entertainment, and sports shows. Create custom playlists, rate and review this show, Cafeteria Catholics on Stitcher. 
Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. Stitcher is also available on over 4 million car dashboards. On demand and on the go. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. Stream your favorite podcasts, including Cafeteria Catholics on Stitcher.com. Stitcher.com. There's a way of life where simplicity brings joy and humility leads to happiness. Where we learn that less is more and in giving we receive. It's our refuge from chaos and light to guide us through darkness. It's a place where the broken receive healing and repentant hearts find mercy. Here, our days are set free from anxiety and addictions and our nights rest with more peace. So where is this hope and who knows the way? Our hope rests in Jesus and his church leads the way. If you're longing to fill an emptiness or seeking a way home, we invite you to experience the peace that only comes from God. We are Catholic. Welcome home. Goodbye. What's going on, fellow Catholics? Welcome back, Cafeteria Catholics. Your little Catholic edge of the Internet universe. And there's a little bit of salsa for Bishop John Stowe, our new bishop here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. As you know, he served in the Diocese of El Paso, Texas. And so maybe uh, this music reminds him a little bit of... Uh, his days in El Paso. Woo! El Gran Combo de Puerto Rico. But anyway, fellow Catholics, talking a little bit about illegal immigration. <laughs> you know, whenever you hear a bishop speak about immigration, right, what he really means to say Translation time, okay? When you hear a member of the clergy talking about immigration, what he really means to say is illegal immigration. That's what he's really talking about, okay? Illegal immigration. They like to leave that word out. Illegal. It is illegal immigration, meaning these people, they don't belong here, you know? They do not belong here. They have violated the law. This is the only case, I think, where I've seen where members of the clergy, members of the clergy, uh, are, are willing to reward a person who commits a crime, right? I mean, when we go to confession, right, we confess crimes that we have committed against God. You know, the priest doesn't say, ah, oh, forget about it, you know. If we happen to go to confession to a bishop, the bishop doesn't say, ah, forget about it, who cares, right? No, he's going to give you penance, right? You're going to have to do some penance, whether it be a Hail Mary, whether it be some restitution, whatever it might be. You are not rewarded for committing a crime. The teaching of the Catholic Church does not allow for that. And yet here we have an instance where millions of people have committed a crime. And rather than have them do some kind of penance, some sort of restitution, the bishops want to reward these people with everything that this country has to offer. Right? Well, I'm sorry, but you've got to earn that. You've got to earn it. Right? And I've 
drawn the comparison many times here on the show. What about immigration law uh, in the Catholic Church? There is an orderly way of migrating into the Catholic faith, into the Catholic Church. You can't just jump over a fence. You can't just sneak over, uh, you know, sneak in, uh, and sneak in an open window, sneak in an open stained glass window, right? <laughs> you can't do that, right? There's a certain procedure. There are laws within the Catholic Church that have to be followed if you want to migrate into the Catholic Church from some other denomination, right? can't just hop over a fence. You have to take RCIA classes, right? If you're not baptized, you have to be baptized. If you've not been confirmed, you have to be confirmed, which chances are if you are coming in from some other denomination, you've not been confirmed. You've got to do all these things, right? There's a certain procedure that has to be followed in order for you to migrate into the Catholic Church. We have immigration law within the Catholic Church. And I guarantee you, none of these bishops are willing to do away with immigration law into the Catholic Church. They're not going to do away with RCIA. If you need to be baptized, they are, not let you, they're, they are not going to let you come into the Catholic Church without first being baptized. If you need to be confirmed, they are not going to let you come into the Catholic Church without first being confirmed. Right? You need to go through RCIA. You need to be uh, educated as to what it is that we believe as Catholics, right? You need to understand why it is that we as Catholics believe that the bread and the wine at Mass after the consecration is not merely bread and wine any longer, but the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You need to come to an understanding of that. You need to understand why it is that we put Mary on such a high pedestal. We don't worship Mary, but we honor her for playing a part in our salvation. You need to come to terms with that. I know that this is a big sticking point for many who come into the Catholic Church, the Blessed Virgin Mary. right? And so you have to understand why it is that we honor the Blessed Mother in the way in which we do as Catholics. right? You need to have a complete understanding of the Catholic faith. You need to understand why it is that the Catholic Church opposes artificial contraception, opposes abortion, why we do not ordain women to the priesthood. You need to understand those things before you become Catholic. You can't just sneak in an open window can't just jump over the communion rail, right? You can't just receive a uh, uh, communion without understanding first that you are not merely receiving a symbol of our Lord, but that this is truly our Lord present under the appearance of, of bread and wine. You need to understand the, these, uh, the, these tenets of Catholicism, right? And in the same way, you need to understand American history. You need to understand why it is that we value freedom. You need to understand why it is that we reject, well, <laughs> to a certain extent, the communist system, right? Under Barack Hussein Obama, it seems like, a, you know, a <laughs> we are all about communism under Barack Hussein Obama, right? No religious freedom under Barack Hussein Obama. It's all about, uh, it's all, uh, no freedom, right? No freedom. If Barack Hussein Obama had his way, we would have no freedom whatsoever in this country, right? The only freedoms that we would have would be abortion, killing babies in the womb, and artificial contraception, right? That's the only, uh, you can, you know, uh, partake of, uh, of as much artificial contraception as humanly possible under Barack Hussein Obama. You have that freedom, right? If he had his way with the HHS mandate, which they will not let up on this HHS mandate, the courts will not let up, in spite of the fact that the Supreme Court has remanded one of these cases back 
to uh, the appellate court, right? You still have these appellate courts uh, 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 who refuse to toss the HHS mandate out the window, right? But it's inevitable. The HHS mandate will fall. But Barack Hussein Obama, he has no, you know, he has no qualms stepping all over your religious freedom. Has no qualms, right? But anyway, the point being, there is a reason for immigration law. There is a reason why it takes so long to become an American citizen. There is a reason why it takes so long, in some cases, to become Catholic. You know, we've brought you a, a, a story here before of a soldier, an American soldier, who wished to become Catholic. And it took the guy seven years to become Catholic. Okay? And this happened in the diocese that is under the pastoral care of Eusebio Elizondo, the bishop whom you heard patting Barack Hussein Obama on the back for violating the Constitution, right? And refusing to enforce immigration law into this country, right? So he's okay with the non-enforcement of the law when it comes to immigration into this country, but he's not okay with the violation of immigration law into the Catholic Church. I am very welcoming the, his, his move, his action, of course, because I will benefit at, at least five million people to, to really legalize their, their status here, and especially for all those uh, adults that have already children, U.S. citizens born here. And so it will be great for them to have, have a legal status and work here normally, and, and for them it's a, re a real relief. So he's all for the violation of the law, right? The violation of immigration law into this country. He's fine with that, but he's not fine with the violation of immigration law into the Catholic Church. He makes this soldier wait seven years. This guy is out in the battlefield. Could lose his life along with his desire to become a Catholic. Could lose it out there in the battlefield. And yet, Bishop Eusebio Elizondo did not make an exception for this hero of ours, this American hero. But he wants Barack Hussein Obama to make an exception for, who knows at this point, how, ma how many millions of illegal immigrants in this country, right? But anyway, that's enough of that. We we've talked about illegal immigration many times on this show and I'm sure you're tired of hearing of it but I'm just I, I, I flip my lid I flip my lid I go nuts anytime I hear a member of the clergy anytime I hear a member of mainstream Catholic media compare immigration law in this country to Roe versus Wade it's incredible you know what Catholic mainstream media should be concerned with is the confusion that's going on in the Senate on the family. This is what they should concern themselves with. The confusion that is being sown by the Senate on the family. This is what they should concern themselves with instead of immigration law, just immigration law in this great country of ours. That's what they should concern themselves with. You know, the Senate on the family, there's so much confusion coming coming out of there. You know, sometimes I think that it's like an Abbott and Costello routine, you know. This is what made Abbott and Costello so funny, right? Confusion. And I love Abbott and Costello. When I was a kid, I, I, I used to watch Abbott and Costello, you know, but that's what made them funny. Confusion. Well, let's see. Now, we have on our team, we have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find then, out, the guy's name. And then, uh -huh. That's what I want to find out, the guy's name. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Now, Abby, you want to be the manager of the baseball team? Yes. You know the guy's names? Well, I should. Well, you tell me the guy's names on the baseball I team. I say, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You ain't saying nothing to me yet. Go ahead and tell me. <laughs> 
I'm telling him. You said none yet. Go ahead and tell me. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Who's on third? You know the guy's I'll... names on the baseball team? Yes. Well, go ahead. Who's on first? Yes. I mean the guy's name. Who? The guy playing first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first base. <laughs> Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I don't know. Now, wait a minute. I'm not. I'm not... <laughs> See confusion. <laughs> You know, the Synod on the Family is like a comedy routine between Abbott and Costello. That's what it's... <laughs> that's what it's come down to at the Synod on the Family. Right? Homosexuality is okay. No, it's not. Right? It's not okay. But the Synod on the Family says that... Essentially, it says that it is. Right? Members, certain members of the clergy within the Senate on the family say that there's nothing wrong with homosexuality, right? That there is value in homosexual unions. You've got some members of the clergy within the Senate on the family actually saying this, fellow Catholics, right? Which leads to confusion among the laity. A laity that is already confused because they never hear the teaching of the Catholic Church on any of these issues, right? When was the last time you heard the word homosexuality from your pulpit? The word contraception from your pulpit? The word abortion used to be, back in the 90s, I remember abortion being a constant theme, even here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, right? Abortion. You heard the word abortion quite often from the pulpit. You don't hear it anymore, right? I mean, uh, we get to hear it, my family and myself. We get to hear it because we happen to attend St. Luke in Nicholasville here in Kentucky. And we have a down-the-line Catholic pastor, Father Bush, who is not afraid to step on toes, right? And so we get to hear the word abortion, we get to hear the word homosexuality, we get to hear the teaching of the Catholic Church on homosexuality, on abortion, on artificial contraception. We get to hear it often, right? But you just go to, an, you know, we go to a, a parishes around Lexington here, and we just, we, I personally, I don't hear the word abortion. I don't hear the word contraception. I don't hear the word sin, right? I don't hear the word sin. And so we have a laity that is confused out there. They are confused. You know the guy's name on first base? Sure. Tell me the guy's name on first base. Who? The guy playing first base. Who is on first, Lou? What are you asking me for? Now, don't get excited. I'm saying who. I'm asking you a simple question. Who's at first? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who? <laughs> I'm asking you, what's the guy's name on first base? Oh, no, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? One base at a time. <laughs> Don't mix up my... I'm story. not mixing up anybody. Now, what's the guy's name on first base? No, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who is on first? I don't know. He's on third. We're not talking. <laughs> Wait a minute. Whoa. <laughs> That's what's going on at the Senate on the family. It's an Abbott and Costello routine, right? Rooted in confusion. And this is from LifeSite News, something you will not get to hear from mainstream Catholic media because they, they are too busy honing in on the unjust immigration laws that we, <laughs> that we have here in this country, laws that are there to protect the lives, in some instances, of American citizens, right? But you will not get to hear this on mainstream Catholic media, okay? This is from LifeSite News. Bishops plot revolution on church teaching at secret Rome meeting. So there's this meeting that took place last week. Uh, and you did not hear about this, did you, right? But there was this secret meeting, okay? And LifeSite News, they report on this meeting. And obviously, you know, it, how could it be secret if LifeSite News knows about it? Well, it was leaked. It was leaked to the press. Okay? And... Here it is. A private meeting convened by the president of the German, Swiss, and French bishops' conferences was held on Monday at the Pontifical Gregorian University. 
the Jesuit University under the Holy See in anticipation of the Synod on the Family to be held in October. The objective was clearly to push for changes in pastoral practice as regards communion for the divorced and remarried as well as the welcoming of Catholics living in stable, this is a quote, living in stable same-sex unions. <laughs> stable. What is stable about sodomy? Right? What is stable about a same-sex union? There's nothing stable about it. But yet you have members of the clergy in secret, right? Or at least they attempt it to have a secret meeting where they espoused these uh, alien teachings, right? Stable same-sex unions. What is stable about same-sex unions, right? For one thing, a same-sex union is godless. Okay? God cannot participate. By definition, cannot participate in a same-sex union. Right? It goes against the law of nature which God himself put into place. There is a, 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 a order to everything that God creates. Right? Just look at the, the planets, the way that they are aligned. God is a God of order. The sun, for instance, is at just the right distance from the earth so that we here on earth can benefit from the heat of the sun rather than fall victim to the heat of the sun. Right? God is a God of order. And there is an order to everything that God has created. That includes sex. And the order of sex the context of sex is marriage between a man and a woman. Not a man and a man or a woman and a woman. But this is where sex should take place. What would happen if the sun was to shift its position? Right? Chaos. Turmoil. It would be catastrophic, right? Well, this is what happens when we take sex out of the context in which it belongs. Sex belongs in the context of a married man and a married woman. This is where it belongs. I've got some beeping going on here, fellow Catholics. Let me take a look. Okay, let's click on this. Let's close that, and there we go. But this is where sex, belong. uh, sex belongs. It belongs in the context of marriage between a man and a woman. You take it out of that order, doesn't matter whether it's heterosexual sex, right? If it's sex between a man and a woman who are not married, chaos ensues, right? Maybe you have an unwanted pregnancy. What happens? Maybe an abortion happens, right? An abortion happens. Murder takes place. This is what abortion is. It is murder. And so you have chaos. And, you know, even the Gut Matcher Institute, Gut Matcher Institute, they have found through their own studies, and the Gut Matcher Institute is the research arm of Planned Parenthood. So essentially, Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood studies have shown that women who have abortions could later in life, or they say could, right? They've got to throw that word in there. But the fact of the matter is, is that an abortion later in life for the woman who has an abortion can cause PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, right? So you have abortion, right? You take sex out of the context in which it belongs and you have abortion. You have, uh, you have PTSD, you have suffering, Right? You have the annihilation not only of that baby in the womb, but 
of an entire generation. You are not killing solely that baby in the womb. You are killing the babies that that baby as an adult might have had. And the babies that those babies could have had and so on and so on. Right? You are annihilating an entire generation. You have chaos. You have universal chaos. Simply because you decided to take sex out of its proper context, which is sex between a married man and a woman, not between two men or two women, right? There is nothing stable, nothing stable about a homosexual union, right? And the reason there's nothing stable about it is because you have a godless union. God cannot participate in that union between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. He cannot participate in that union. What is it that God does? He creates, right? This is what God does. He creates. He is the master of creation. He creates. How is it that he creates human beings? He creates human beings through the conjugal act between a man and a woman, in marriage preferably, right? Man and a woman, they come together. The man, he provides the seed. The woman, she provides the ovum or the egg. And what is it that God provides? He provides the eternal soul. Right? And so you have God participating in that union between a married man and a married woman by its very nature. A homosexual union is unstable because it is a union without God, because God cannot participate in that union. Right? And so, by definition, a homosexual union is a godless union. This is the confusion that we have coming out of the Senate on the family. How did I, how did I get on third base? You mentioned his name. I mentioned his name? Yes. I don't know anybody's name on the team. I, how could I mention a guy's name? You did. You just mentioned it. All right. What's the guy's name on third base? No, what's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's on first. <laughs> Yes, you did. All right, then who's playing third base? No, who's on first? I'm not asking you what's on first. What's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's third base. <laughs> so rather than focusing on the uh, the unjustness, right? Quote unquote, the unjustness of immigration law in this great country of ours. Why doesn't the clergy? Well, I shouldn't say that there are many members of the clergy actually that are honing in, right, on the confusion that is being sown by the Synod on the Family. Many members of the clergy, of course, we've got Cardinal George Pell, who is unafraid of shining a light on what is truly going on within the Synod on the Family. Another important thing to remember is that uh, communion for the divorced and remarried is, for some, very few, but certainly not the majority of the Senate fathers, it's only at the tip of the iceberg. It's a stalking horse. They want wider changes. Uh, recognition of civil unions, recognition uh, of homosexual unions. The Church cannot go in that uh, direction. Cardinal George Bell, unafraid to expose the confusion, the outright heresy that is taking place within the Senate on the family. You know, the secret meeting that took place, that mainstream Catholic media ignored, right? That was leaked to the press, and it seems that the press completely ignored it, except for uh, LifeSite News and a couple of other uh, outlets out there, right? But, uh, these were some of the bullet points at this secret meeting. A new theology of love. This is bullet point number one. A new theology of love. Sexuality as a precious gift of God, as itself an expression of love. 
the church's acceptance this is another bullet point the church's acceptance of homosexual unions okay the church is listening to the voice of the baptized in moral questions uh, there's nothing wrong with that right the change of moral patterns in a pluralistic society admittance of remarried couples to the sacraments and so they're not letting go of this right they are not letting go of this certain members within the synod on the family they are not letting go of it and yet mainstream catholic media they are preoccupied with how unjust these laws of immigration in our great country are right this is what they are focused on immigration law and they go as far some do they go as far as to compare immigration law that is meant to protect american life in some instances in this great country of ours they go as far as to compare it to roe versus wade fellow catholics do you believe that do you believe that i this is just adding to the confusion as far as i'm concerned right when you've got members of mainstream catholic media who are out there saying that immigration law is as unjust as roe versus wade really i mean it's just inconceivable inconceivable how a member of mainstream catholic media could come to that conclusion could espouse such a teaching right they are just adding to the confusion well let's see now we have on our team we have who's on first what's on second i don't know who's on third that's what i want to find then, out the guy's name and then, uh -huh. that's what i want to find out the guy's name i'm telling you who's on first what's on second i don't know who's on third now, Abby, you now, want to be the manager of the baseball team yes you know the guy's names well i should well you tell me the guy's names on the baseball I team i say who's on first what's on second i don't know who's on third you ain't saying nothing to me yet go ahead and tell me <laughs> I'm telling him. You said nothing yet. Go ahead and tell me. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Is on third. You know the guy's I'll... names on the baseball team. Yes. Well, go ahead. Who's on first? Yes. I mean the guy's name. Who? The guy playing first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first base. <laughs> Who is on first? Why are you asking me? For? I don't know. Now, wait a minute. I'm not. I'm not... <laughs> so you mean people who are divorced and remarried, they can receive holy communion? No. But. The Synod on the Family, there are members of the Synod on the Family who say yes, but no, you can't receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if you happen to be divorced and living in adultery with someone else. Yeah, but the Synod on the Family says, Cardinal Casper says, Cardinal Reinhard Marx says, well, I know they say that, but if you go to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, what's the Catechism of the Catholic Church? <laughs> that's what's going on within the walls of Holy Mother Church confusion so is homosexuality okay no it's not well you've got Cardinal Casper out there saying that there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, homosexual union so is sodomy okay no, it's not. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2357 says, Well, my pastor doesn't say that. Why, well, no, but that is the teaching of the Catholic Church. You can trace it all the way back to the infancy of the Catholic Church. You know, the Didache, the teaching of the Twelve. What's that? A document. A document from where? The Catholic Church. You know, it's, it's the oldest document that the Catholic Church has in her possession. And what's it called again? The Didache. What's that? The teaching of the Twelve Apostles. The teaching of the Twelve Apostles. So this comes straight from the Apostles? Well, some scholars say that it comes, uh, this is what came out of the Council of Jerusalem and the Acts of the Apostles. Okay? The Acts of the Apostles. Really? Yes. Well, my pastor doesn't say that. My pastor seems to think that we need to be more open to homosexuality. Well, we're not supposed to be open to homosexuality because that's not the teaching of the Catholic Church. Well, what about what's happening over there in San Francisco, the Archdiocese of San Francisco? Well, you've got all of these Catholics. They want to oust their archbishop. Well, I know, but it's because they are confused. 
They're confused. Sounds to me like you're confused. Because what you're telling me doesn't mesh with what I hear from the, or don't hear from the pulpit. Nothing but confusion, fellow Catholics. How did, I, how did I get on third base? You mentioned his name. I mentioned his name? Yes. I don't know anybody's name on the team. I, how could I mention a guy's name? You did. You just mentioned it. All right. What's the guy's name on third base? No, what's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's on first. You ready? <laughs> Guy's name on third base. Yes, you did. All right, then who's playing third base? No, who's on first? I'm not asking you what's on first. What's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's third base. It is a comedy routine that we've got going on within the Senate on the family, except that it's not that funny, right? It's not that funny. But anyway, let's go ahead and leave it there, fellow Catholics, and we will see you next time on Cafeteria Catholics. Please pray for our bishops. Please pray for mainstream Catholic media. Please pray for this great country of ours. As you know, this great country of ours, fellow Catholics, is in dire need of prayer. So please, pray. See you next time. And here we go with El Gran Combo dedicated to Bishop John Stowe. God bless. Goodbye. Assemble the army! I request the cone of silence.